love you for life. What's up, Kyle Bottom guys? This your boy Joe DeVance came back to a new house, some new shoes, thanks to Titan. Salamat so much. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the PBA bubble experience. Now let's hit the rewind button. <laughs> All right guys, let's talk about the first day we was there. First of all, we get there from our team bus. First thing we do is we swab test, right? Swab test, that's normal nowadays, right? Swab testing. So we swab test and as soon as we get there, we get our rooms. We have to quarantine for the next, I think three or four days it was. So we could not leave our room. So we was basically trapped in our room two grown men. My first roommate was Prince. We had two six, six guys, not really a big room. So, you know, we was kind of cramped in there, um, but we made the best of it. So we was quarantined for four days. We had to do team workouts through Zoom. The room wasn't that big, right? So we had to basically take turns in doing our workout. So we had two workout groups. I think I was, the, I was always the first group, I can't remember. And there were certain exercises where we didn't have any weights in the room. So basically our weight was, I remember I was lifting uh, my luggage, my, I, I think I had like a, uh, what, a carry-on bag or something like that. And I was lifting, uh, I was lifting up luggage as my weight. And I'm over here doing, uh, doing like my bicep curls and, and my shoulder lifts like this using a suitcase, which, which was kind of funny at the time. I think Mark, uh, Mark Agiwa, he was using his uh, JBL boombox uh, system, which was kind of silly. Um, Cause I think that thing weighs like five pounds. So he was only lifting five pounds, <laughs> so dumb. And I remember the first day we were able to, to leave our rooms. We really didn't know what to do. We was just so excited, you know. Uh, we had practice that day, and I remember that practice was really, really tough. That was basically our first real practice the whole year, basically. We had workouts before we came to the bubble. We had workouts, but that was our true first practice. I really remember just having that that first practice was 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 really, really tough. After getting uh, situated with uh, with that with the with the first three days of quarantine and, and us getting through the first day of practice we got a little bit comfortable um, and that's when I remember I found out that Prince had uh, great singing skills yeah. <laughs> Prince possesses great singing oh, abilities and uh, I found go. that out while we're in the bubble. I can't remember what song it was, but um, I mean, he's a great singer. Now, I found out, and I didn't know this uh, before, about uh, my teammate Stanley Pringle. Um, I did not know that he could play the piano as well as he could. Um, there was an episode where he, uh, he kind of shocked all of us at, at breakfast one day and just kind of busted out on the uh, on the piano, which, I mean, everybody was <laughs> was shocked. Oh, like a Lisa Keys or something. Oh, 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 okay, we're gonna start a band real quick. Hey, no, hey, okay. Right now we're here. Oh, 
he got everybody else live. I found out then that he was he was into music and he, he makes beats and stuff like that. I had no idea. So that was pretty cool to, to find out about, about Stan. Uh, what else did I learn about my teammates? I learned that Mark uh, has no talent outside of basketball. Uh, so I didn't, I, I thought he would have been talented at something, but I found that out that he has no talent besides basketball. <laughs> I'd go to the PBA bubble, not in the best of, of shape. So what I was doing was when I first got there, I was trying to do like a fasting. So I was, I was trying to eat one meal a day. At first it was cool. It was, it was, it was all right. You know, I was, I was hanging through and there was that one day in particular where I didn't eat for like 26 or 27 hours. Within that window, we had weights, we had cardio, uh, running on the street, we had to run on the street, and then we had weights again. So I had four workouts and I didn't eat not one time. By the time the last practice uh, started, I was already physically drained. I basically just passed out at practice. And then that's when um, uh, JD, Stan, and Mark had my camera and basically was just making fun of me that episode because uh, because uh, I was just, I was, uh, I basically died or I almost died that day. And who can forget the prank episode? My teammate Raymond Aguilar had uh, some fake rats or something like that, some mechanical rats or something. And at the time, I didn't know that they were uh, that they were fake. Stan, I think Stan or JD or something like that said something. Raymond has rats, just kind of casually. And then next thing you know, I see Raymond in the hallway holding something up and was like, ah, just chasing me down the hallway, right? So I'm like, ah, you ain't gonna get me, Raymond. You ain't gonna get me. So I'm taking off, right? I, I took off and, the, and just to remind you, we're, we're grown men, right? Running down a hotel like we're some kids, right? So as soon as he says, uh, you know, he, he has a rat, he has a rat. I just take off running because I'm allergic to rats. Right? So I take off running. I'm going like this, right? <laughs> right? And I just tried to uh, open up the, the whatever door was open. And I think it just so happened to be Mark's, uh, Mark's, Mark in LA's room. So I just bust in there. I shut the door real quick, right? I basically wait till I knew that it was safe to go outside, right? Um, another thing I remember, which was pretty special in the bubble was Mark reached a milestone, which was 19 years on the same team. And he's like the longest member in the PBA history to, to do something like that. For me as a player is really cool and, and really special just, just because I've battled with him for 13 out of the 19 years. <laughs> My wife Monica would send us, I, we got, we called this a Yuda day, and it was basically a care package. And my wife, I remember the first time she sent the care package, it was a, she sent gumbo. It's a, it's, it's some gumbo, okay? Look, look, we don't know how to act right now. Home cooked meal, oh shit, we don't know how to act. Look, look, come on, let's get a close up. Ooh, oh, we about to kill this dog. Oh my gosh, it was so delicious. And I remember in, in my first care package, Prince um, had the gumbo for the first time and oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> And then I remember game four, Nico Salva. I was, I went downstairs, I'm going downstairs to the lobby and I remember seeing Nico Salva in my seat during the breakfast of champions. The same table, the same thing where I was sitting, I saw him sit there, right? Supposedly he, he did that on purpose to mess up my routine. Before game five, I ran into them in the hallway and uh, because we had the swab test, I think. He said, he basically said he did that on purpose just to mess up my routine. So basically Nico Salvo was trying to sabotage our championship knowing that the breakfast of champions was very, very important to me, to my team, and to the Hinebra community. So he was purposely trying to sabotage it, the breakfast of champions, just so they can win. <laughs> There was uh, there were there were times in the in the PBA bubble where I got 
kind of lonely. I really missed my family. So you know, I tried as much as I could to talk to them, to do video calls and stuff like that. Um, I remember there was there was one time where, there was a couple times, um, but I remember one in particular where Monica sent pictures of the whole family with Bella, you know, my kids, Bella, Jace, Jaden, and Zeke. And, you know, when I, it was, I think it was kind of hidden. It was hidden in my luggage and I didn't know that it was there. Um, so when I saw it, I got kind of emotional. I was like, <laughs> you know, I didn't really cry, but I was like, <laughs> you know, but um, I really appreciated that because it was, even though I didn't have them in my, in my presence physically, I, you know, I could always look at the pictures and stuff like that. And, and it came with the note and stuff like that. Um, I remember my daughter, Bella, she wrote me, uh, she wrote me a, a little note. Oh, look. Oh, guys, look, look, it's a letter. It's a letter with some pictures. And I, I think didn't even drew see me this. something or something like that. And oh I, I slept Wait. with it, you know, right here. I had like a little desk right here and I slept with it right there. I actually made like a frame. I made like a frame and then put it above my bed like that. And I would always read it, you know, before going to bed. And then when I wake up, I would read it and give it a kiss and a hug, you know, just to make myself feel good. But, uh, you know, it was it was tough being away from the from the kids for so long. I I've never been away from the family uh, for that long. And that was also I mean, that was an adjustment that we all had to uh, that we all had to get through, especially me. All right, there's another topic I need to talk about, which is the virtual fan setup. It was, that was a little different. Um, I, to be honest, it wasn't really good or bad. It was, it was different because you see the fans there, right? And somebody that plays for Hanebra is, is actually used to having like these big crowds, right? Like I, I know, I'm sure you guys remember the Justin Brownlee shot when the whole crowd was lit up with their lights, you know? So we go from something like that to having these screens with people on it, with these like random people on it. For me personally, it was cool because they asked us if we could have, if we wanted somebody to be up there, right? So every time I had somebody up there, I remember me, there was times in the game where I'm looking at, I'm looking at the screen to see if, uh, if I see somebody on there, rather than like focusing on the game, you know? So I don't want to say it was a distraction, but again, it was just different and something that we weren't used to. <laughs> there was one day where um, we have a restaurant um, called, uh, El well, it's not really a restaurant, it's called a Cloud Kitchen, which is called El Nacho Libre. And I was able to set it up with the PBA or actually my wife, I'll get in trouble if I don't say my wife. Sorry, sweetie. Uh, my wife set up uh, the El Nacho Libre delivery. She, she's behind the camera, guys, just so you know. Uh, so I might get in trouble, but uh, I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> my wife set up the delivery for the team to get El Nacho Libre and um, Tiger Sugar. So that was one thing that I felt was, was, pretty, uh, was pretty cool. That was something that was, that was needed because again, for the two months that we was there, we basically had like the same food. We couldn't really get outside. We couldn't get outside food. So um, that's why, that's another reason why we was always looking forward to a you today because we always got whatever food, you know, we really craved. Being in the bubble was once again a great experience. Um, it gave us the opportunity to build chemistry together, okay, like this, one unit. You have one unit here, one unit here, but as soon as you do this, you bring the units together to become one, okay? So we built chemistry. We, we were able to come back and play, play the game that we love. We all had the opportunity to, we felt that our purpose was bigger than ourselves because with the pandemic, right, we gave 
an opportunity for people to, to have inspiration, for people to stay at home to watch us play. We felt that we, we just had a bigger purpose than just ourselves. That drove us to perform at a high level and you know just to play as hard as we could and thankfully we were able to make the finals and win the championship <laughs> there's there's a lot of behind the scenes that you guys did not see is practice so from from day one for us working out in our rooms right with with uh, jbo boom boxes to luggages and stuff like that to winning the championship you know our growth from that to to winning a championship everything in between like that has always been coach tim's uh goal for his teams was was the journey right it's not really it's not really about the destination it's about the journey so that's one thing that i can say um about our team is that we really embrace the journey and uh, like I said, we grew so much in that bubble as a player, as players, and as a team. Um, and honestly, I, th I think, I think, I mean, it's easy for me to say now because we won a championship, but I think that we grew the most out of any team in, uh, in the bubble. Um, and that's why we won the championship. Um, I was I was too hyped to even notice, but we won the the championship, and you know I go out there. You guys can see in the video, and I didn't notice that there was a certain fan, right? So I'm yelling, and and I go in the bus. So I'm in the bus, and then Stan was like, "Joe, is that a picture of you?" I was like, "No, nah, man, that's not a picture of me." Like thinking like, why would there be a picture of me, you know, out, you know, on the outside? He he keeps telling me he was like, "Man, no, nah, that's a picture of you, Joe." So I'm looking outside, and then I was like, "Oh shoot, that that's a." It really was a picture of me and uh, me and my wife. This was really really cool. A fan made this portrait of me and my wife. This was a picture of when I surprised my wife with uh, a 10 year anniversary surprise and this is what the fan did see that this was a surprise for uh for me and my wife's 10 year anniversary this guy actually has a youtube page himself Bapong tv i think Bapong tv is his youtube page so this is uh this was really special and again i wouldn't have had the opportunity to get like this or to get this if it wasn't for the for the for the for the fans so you know my love for the never day, the never say die fans is uh, is is very is very big. <laughs> I've been to uh, I've been to what, a few different teams, but the never say die, the Kabaden guy fan base is just something that is extraordinary. You guys are the absolute best, like not even close. I want to tell you guys that I I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Even after basketball, I'm hoping to still be a part of your lives somehow. But these are moments that I will always, always remember for the rest of my life. And I'm hoping that if my kids end up playing basketball, I'm hoping my kids will somehow have the opportunity to feel this same way. So I'm very blessed to be a part of your lives and I'm very thankful. And I want to thank you guys for joining uh, the channel. I hope you enjoy. Uh, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. OK, and keep watching. All right, guys. So I just want to let you guys know, maha kita, okay, to you. And uh, you guys ain't got so much, huh? Bye. See you guys. I'm